So that's Hollywood's most famous portrayal of sex work, the rags to riches, on the streets to true love story, told in Pretty Women. Real life sex work, oh, it's so different. A new book, Working It, Sex Workers on the Work of Sex, details what it's really like. And the executive director of Sex Workers Action Program, or SWAP Hamilton, Yelena Vermillion, contributed to the book, and she joins us this morning. Thanks for joining us, because this book tells so many stories. Yes, it does. And, and it's stories that really need to be told, yeah. because, you know, people see sex work, and, and, and first of all, let's talk about sex work. There's Absolutely. so many different facets to it. It's not just selling sex on the street. No, it's not. Um, we can have people that cam, we can have people that provide stripping services in a club, um, you know, even doing Sugar Baby, which is usually con conceived as something that isn't sex work, is sex work. Okay, Sugar Baby is where you kind of, you find somebody who's going to spend a lot of money on you in return for services. It's kind of like, sex work light or at least people like to consider it where people are um, freestyling they are courting gentlemen usually uh, in in the world and they're trying to get through their you know oh I'm going to college I'm going to university I need this for my tuition I need this for my upkeep um, and it's sort of um, speaking about the hierarchy where there's this kind of schism yeah you call it the hierarchy but yes. it's the hierarchy yeah so yes. people yeah. who participate less in sexualized services feel like they're better um, than people who do and so you you have sugar babies who kind of um, push themselves away from full service sex workers, people who provide actual sexual services in their in their clientele. Um, and, and it creates this attitude of, of um, derision, of ostracism, where people who aren't actually doing full service sex work feel like they're better. And, and unfortunately, it creates this, this culture of, um, of um, not camaraderie. <laughs> right. And, and, and I mean, your whole group is, is trying to kind of bring everybody together and advocate for people because it's, it's people who do camera work. And, and a lot of people went into that during the uh, pandemic when yes. close, you know, first person, um, you know, it, it, you know, and an added danger to that. There was over 100,000 OnlyFans accounts uh, at the beginning of the pandemic that were actually registered as a result of the influx of work needed by people. You know, as you have um, increasing in austerity and poverty, uh, the increase of rent, everything, people are going to need to seek more work. And sex work usually provides a wage higher than, you know, your average minimum wage, uh, mm -hmm. minimum wage job. So and OnlyFans is a social media app that's... OnlyFans or, is a or, website that people a can... A website, okay. Yes, so they can basically have a platform. It's a lot like Patreon where you have like private viewers that subscribe. They pay a monetary amount to subscribe to your feed and you can post. Usually it's um, adult material, but some people have also made OnlyFans accounts for cooking, for um, niche content and things like this. Um, but it has grown most popular as a result of the adult content on mm -hmm. its network. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a whole, you talk about the hierarchy and the hierarchy. Um, there's like the whole, what happens in sex clubs? I had no idea that a lot of dancers have to end up paying and sometimes go yes, in debt for absolutely. the work that they do because you've got to tip everybody. Yes, so because of the, the current legislation in Canada, sex workers aren't respected as workers and so that does actually foster situations of exploitation for people who are wanting to act as their management, for example. It isn't to say that sex work itself is exploitative, that is not true and that's why we seek decriminalization in Canada as part of the Canadian Alliance for Sex Work Law Reform and the current federal case against the government right now that we're participating in as Swap Hamilton. Um, but what is most important is to realize that anybody who is in the sex industry, whether they are providing a sexualized service or whether they are just dancing nude or providing some sort of sexual performance, we are all valid and sex workers belong here. We belong in the community and we're just so happy that this book is a kaleidoscope of perspectives of sex workers from various experiences. Mm -hmm. we, we have even um, uh, one of my colleagues, Crystal, in, in the book who is Canadian and is an experienced as Indigenous woman and the Canadian welfare child system. So um, we've got a lot of perspectives um, and the thing that I think mostly rings true, the common denominator from all the contributors is that we're all saying we need decriminalization as a first and vital step in order to to move our work forward and to be respected as other as laborers in the industry in the world so because you you don't you know you don't get benefits you don't get paid a regular wage it's 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 so so unregulated and and in some cases so dangerous but yet in in others like you make it work yeah i mean it could be dangerous but i think the thing is that we don't we don't sort of infantilize other people in other industries that are dangerous. We provide danger pay um, or risk pay to those other you get a industries. Premium. You get a premium. And so when we're talking about 
protecting the rights and dignities of sex workers, we really need to start with decriminalization. And this book is, is really um, just one drop in the bucket of so many perspectives. Sex workers have mm -hmm. been um, vying for their rights for decades. Um, St. Nizier Church in France, sex workers um, took the church over and, and actually protested for days, saying that they were being discriminated against by police. They were being given fines. And how do you pay off a fine other than doing work? Yeah. And of course, the fines were exorbitant, yeah. uh, meant to be a deterrent from doing sex work. But uh, honestly, it was just the state pimping on sex workers. So we got about 30 seconds left. You, you do a lot of sex work sex positive work. Yes, I do. Want to talk about your t-shirt? Sure. So this shirt is actually by the artist Raging Fembot um, and we have a website rightsnotrescue.ca where Swap Hamilton helps to sell amazing art. It's a sex worker art distribution where all of our art is sex work affirming and positive. So rightsnotrescue.ca, this is Raging Fembot. Check out okay. her art and thank you so much for having me today. All right. Working It is out now and we'll get the link up on our website. Yelena, thanks so much for opening our eyes. Thank you very much, Annette. Take care.